Good morning, I'm very ill. My brain is boiling at a nice like 99.8 degrees, meaning that there's no possible way that I'm making a video essay this week. But what I am very capable of doing is talking my shit and shit posting and doing a Q&A and life update video. Call me Elio, but these peaches fuck. This is the only thing I've been craving and consuming for like the last day. Peaches in, in regular form, in, in jarred form. Anyway, hi. Long time, no personal video. Don't look in my fridge. That's such a personal thing. Oh my God. You are the most important thing to me. Like I would literally pass away if it weren't for you. I tell her that every single day. And if you were to like one day decide to die, then like that's my last day as well. Sorry. Sorry, my friends and family, but I'm not surviving if Clementine doesn't. If you're saying to yourself, Nicole, you don't look sick. You don't look ill at all. You look so good. You look beautiful. You look stunning. You look radiant. You look glowing. I agree. I agree with you. I also just cut the center of my bangs, so don't look at that. They're getting in my eyes. It's the day of the week. Oh, it's Friday, baby. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, baby. Friday. That's the only way that I know what day of the week it is based off of what H3 episode I know is coming out today. It's Friday, baby. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, baby. Fuck. Unfortunately, since the last time that you've seen me, make like a personal video, a video that isn't a video essay or me reading smut online. I've unfortunately become a very big H3 fan, have really gotten into the H3 lore. My sense of humor is that of a 12 year old boys. It's honestly embarrassing. Everyone says that they missed the old me. She's dead. Ugh. Oh, this is my son. Oh my God, poopy. Yeah. Since I'm gonna be isolated by myself and have nothing else to do today, other than the stuff that I need to do at home, I thought to myself, why not vlog it? I also have this very long, fun, drawn out video that requires a lot of planning. And I'm really, really excited for it, but I know it's gonna take a lot of time working on it and editing, and I didn't wanna leave you guys without a video for a while. So I thought let's do like a little life update Q&A, me talking to you guys. I've also gained a lot of new subscribers recently, which first of all, I can't. Makes me so happy that you guys have been liking the videos I've been uploading lately, especially like the Colleen Hoover ones with Jake and video essays in general because they're so like fulfilling and it makes me feel like all my hard work is worth it and it really makes me feel like, oh my god, Nicole, like you're using your degree. I'm like making my grandmother proud. <laughs> it also helps heal 21 year old Nicole's feelings uh, because she thought that her YouTube channel was gonna be dead. So I thought to myself, why not make everyone fall in love with me even more or make them run for the hills and unsubscribe by making a personal video. I asked you guys on my Instagram, which I'm so famous on, I asked you guys to send me some questions. That's why I get to do errands with you and I'm stuck inside the house and it's, it's like the quarantine vlogs all over again. Any new tattoos? Yes, unless you're my mom, no. I have an upper back tattoo. Stained glass window because I love the Catholic Church. I just went to a Strokes concert last week and the security guard in there was like, you know, they're giving out free tattoos in the back and we're like, sure they are. And she's like, no, I'm being dead serious. I got one. Do you have to do that while I'm recording a video? I feel bad for talking to you like that. I'm sorry. We went and it was like a flash sheet and they had three humping bunnies as one of the flash. And so me and my friend G got matching three humping bunnies. Because why the hell not? Look how fertile they are. Something I hope I'm not, but. Hi Nicole, can you speak any other language than English? Mówisz po polsku? Tak, mówię po polsku. To było mój pierwszy język. Ja nigdy nie chcę rozmawiać po polsku na internecie, bo I have anxiety. Any new apartment updates? Yeah, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because I told myself I was gonna stop so many times. I found him for $2 at Goodwill. He was kind of the new orientation of my living room. I put my desk back in that corner so I can work from there. This like lucite shelf thing here. Cute. Guys, did you know I got this for $5? No, I won't shut up about it. I got this new coffee table off of Facebook Marketplace. I don't want to talk about it. I woke up with no intentions of getting anything off of Facebook Marketplace. I had no intentions of getting a new coffee table, but I am nonetheless silly. This was my original coffee table. I felt like it was just too short. This over here along with my mirror. Yeah, found this on the side of the road, brought in here, holds my plan up. This bench is over here. 
move my vinyl and also got this table off of Facebook Marketplace. And I love it. I did real quick want to thank today's sponsor. If you're too busy with your end of the summer goals to cook, but want to make sure that you're still eating well and enough. With Factor, I skipped the extra trip to the grocery store, chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality that you need. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy and get back to crushing your goals. And in Factor, you can be rest assured that you're making a sustainable choice. They offset 100% of their delivery emissions and they source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices. This August, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. All you have to do is simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door. Right in two minutes, no prep, no mess. Factor is my go-to lunch solution when I'm running and on the go. Like right now, I'm about to go to the beach and I need to get out of the door pretty fast. And it's nice that I'm just able to go in my fridge and I have a meal within two minutes. And I know that I will be well fed. And also since I'm on the go a lot, it helps that skipping a meal is not really an option because I have meals ready in my fridge. So I'm never low on energy or getting headaches from skipping a meal because I'm too busy. Head to factor75.com or click the link down below and use code Nicole Raffi 50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Factor is actually now owned by HelloFresh with a wider array of meal plans to choose from. There's literally something for everyone. I love switching between the brands and now my viewers and subscribers can enjoy both brands at a discount with my code. Thank you, Factor. Damn, I might have really messed up my bangs. That's really fine. Not like I have a wedding to go to next weekend. It's fine. Not like I'm a bridesmaid or anything. It's fine. Move my kitchen table over here to use as a desk. Someone asked, what fruit are you currently obsessed with? Oh no. Done with this. Clementine. Out with the old. In with the new. This is all I used to eat during quarantine. Was a little vegan wee yogurt. Ew, I'm getting nostalgic. Ew. I had to buy bleach because... I don't own bleach because I just haven't had a use for bleach right now. I use a bleach alternative. I posted a little while ago, but there's this whole like Urban Outfitters pop up, final sale, store sample sale in Philadelphia. Went to it. Great, good time, fun. Unfortunately, some of the clothes that I bought from there basically it stained the rest of my clothes. So, anyway, all my white clothes are now a baby blue. So, we're gonna try and fix that. Sorry. Probably mix it with something. This is a squeegee. Good. I'm so sad because I like so many of these things. And I'm not gonna wear baby blue. And it's so obvious that it's staying baby blue. Like, I'm sure you can't tell on camera, but this is a sexy ass little tank top. Now it's baby blue. Well, my gym socks are baby blue. Everyone's gonna think I'm doing some like inconspicuous type of gender reveal. And that's not what I'm doing. Set a timer for one hour. Why don't you vlog as much anymore? Okay, that's actually a very good question. Essentially, it does not spark joy. Essentially, it all goes back to a few years ago where I was very personal on my channel and I talked about a lot of personal topics and things that were very near and dear to my heart and that accidentally bit me in the ass because of my videos, someone decided to threaten me and say that they were gonna come to my house and hurt me. That shifted my perspective a lot on what I was doing with my career because although I loved it, I was like, I do not wanna be putting my family through this. I don't wanna be putting myself through this. Yeah, it caused me a lot of mental health issues with paranoia and anxiety and I honestly changed a lot as a person after that. I bought a bat. I decided for myself that if I want to keep doing YouTube as a career, it's just not sustainable for me to be doing videos that are very personal about my life and revealing a lot of personal information. That's not to give power to this person who did this, but it was more so to protect myself and my peace of mind. And I'm telling you right now, ever since the switch in my content where I have stopped making vlogs or I have made more video essays, I have had the most peace of mind ever. I feel safe and secure doing this and I'm not worried anymore. And I know it sucks because people are like, well, we miss the old videos. I'm like, but vlogging was never my favorite to begin with. If there is anything that I have been happiest doing on my channel, it has been video essays and longer form videos like I'm doing right now. And that honestly brings me like the most fulfillment and satisfaction and joy out of anything that I've ever tried doing on my channel. On my Instagram and TikTok, it's still pretty personal. I post what I'm doing on a daily basis, um, but going about it like in a very safe manner. But honestly, at the end of the day, it is to protect myself and my well-being and protecting my peace and bullshit. But honestly, it's true. I have protected my peace so fucking 
closest on I have no drama or worries in my life. How is your OCD? Do you think you'll ever heal from it? No. <laughs> I'm in ERP therapy, which is very helpful, but very fucking hard. I would say right now is the most like hands-on and proactive I've ever been because kind of every day now is a choice and willingness to get better with OCD rather than trying to live in comfort with it. How's your fitness journey been recently? Any tips for motivation? Hell yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I was just, oh, uh, it's just so hard. Oh. <coughs> anyway, it's just so hard being like such a strong woman and just being so fucking strong and just so fucking jacked. And, uh. No, it's going well. Uh, you know. uh. <coughs> Sorry. It's going good. Recently been a weightlifting Stairmaster mommy. And it's just really hard balancing that and being sexy and being successful. It's just a lot at once. No, it's actually going great. All these bags right here are just clothes that I have to sell very soon. I've been meaning for a while now to post those on Depop. In order to post on Depop, you have to have a printer. What 23 year old has a printer? To be honest, probably this weekend while I'm home, I'll actually once again look through my closet because I always tell myself, be realistic this time. I'm very conscious about what I buy now. And there was a period of time where I was still buying clothes in the size that I was years ago. I am not in a 17 year old, 18 year old woman's body anymore. I am now in a 23, almost 24 next month year old's body. But no, I would like buy shirts or I would buy dresses or I would buy pants in sizes that I was like six years ago. And I'm like, What's the point of that? I'm not gonna fit into them anymore because that's just not me anymore. My body's changed, I've gained weight, I'm happy about it, but it's left me with a lot of clothes that sit in my dresser in my closet and I don't even wanna pick up because I know it's not gonna fit me, but I feel too awful about getting rid of it because I was like, oh, maybe one day I'll fit into it, which I'm not going to because I'm not gonna be 18 years old again. I'm 20, I'm almost 24. A bitch has grown. A bitch has gotten stronger. I have gotten stronger. I have gained weight. And I'm just not gonna look the same as when I was a baby. And that's just a fact. And I feel like everyone needs to hear that, honestly. I think that's like part of the new thing that I'm learning within my fitness journey right now. I started weightlifting when I was 17. Do I think I'm like crazy jacked or that it's like my number one priority in life is lifting? No, that's just not me and it never has been. Is it an important part of like my mental health and my routine and a hobby that I like doing, yeah. So, would you consider any of your videos outdated like your opinions on things changed? This is such a good question because I think a lot of people, Clemmy, stop being so scared of everything. Relax. I really do have to make my bed and fold all of that laundry back there. And you guys get to watch me. I've gotten that question so many times, especially on the Doja Cat video. Like, don't you feel stupid now? Like, this video has not aged well. Like, you made this whole video defending her. Don't you look stupid now because she hates her fans? No, I still stand by that video. Everything in that video I still stand by. I think my main point of that video was Doja Cat is not a Satanist. And even if she was that's okay. Uh, satanic panic is just kind of like resurging. Do I sometimes think it's a little corny when some artists use the whole satanic panic as bait? Yeah, of course. And I've talked about that in the video. I think it's a lot of marketing. I think she's really smart because look at her, look at her. We're talking about her. I still do stand by everything that I said in that video though. No judging, just curious. How can you afford your life when you barely post on YouTube anymore? Rent, etc. Good question. I don't love talking about money on the internet. Like does anyone? Yeah, some people definitely do. But for the sake of transparency and also because I have definitely thought the same thing, when I have had favorite YouTubers of mine post significantly less, I'm like, how are you still affording your lifestyle? How do you make rent? How do you pay your bills for anything? First of all, massive disclaimer. Um, I'm very much so aware that my job comes with so much fucking privilege. It's insane. I used to actually feel a lot of guilt about it and feel really terrible about myself because I was like, this is not the way that I was brought up. This is not the way that I grew up in my family. And I feel really guilty and terrible that I can make one video once every few weeks and still be okay. I feel like I'm committing a crime. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Hi. It's been a few hours. My brain is cooking. Last time I saw you, we were talking about money. A lot of content creators actually have more than one source of revenue in the first place. For me, I've been lucky, whether that be YouTube, plus TikTok, plus Instagram, whatever that is, sponsorships, all of that. Basically, even though now I upload less, I'm still making the same amount as if I were uploading more in the past because my videos are 
crazy longer nowadays and my views are also much higher because a lot more people are interested in video essays and commentary videos. I also live very much so below my means. There was another comment that said that I go out a lot. So how do I afford my lifestyle? I cook most nights for myself. Philadelphia is far more cheaper than New York City to live in where a lot of influencers are and their rent is like crazy high. You won't catch me buying luxury stuff or luxury cars. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I drive a Honda. I used to drive a Kia, then it got stolen. I have a retirement fund. I also save a lot and I have financial advisors. And I took a finances class, one of my last semesters in college, and that honestly helped a lot. I folded laundry for like five minutes. I'm like, I'm done. I'm patiently waiting for emergency intercom and H3 to go live. It's the only thing I have to look forward to on a Friday. <sighs> Do you still use a menstrual cup? LOL, I'm just curious. Yeah, baby, it's in me right now. Do you think you'll ever move cities? So I currently live in Philly and I'm very happy with where I'm at now, honestly. I have like no strong desires or intentions. I'm just kind of like living in the moment and I'm very happy with where I'm currently at now. So honestly, no future plans right now. Would you like to buy your gym clothes? Girlfriend collective. I want to work with them one day so bad. That would be the dream. Whether that be to model for them or to have a collection with I don't care. I love them and I've been wearing them for years. I love Girlfriend Collective. Do you ever feel like your opinions are better than everyone else's? Yes, because they're mine. Do you see yourself getting married soon? No, I can't be a child bride. How is your farm going? Very well, thank you for asking. Do you miss your red hair? No. I like having brown hair as well. Brown is my natural color. I feel like it suits me. I had fun in the red, but I'm having fun in the brown. I also like being able to wear red and orange now and feeling like I am not clashing. Was it hard to switch from doing a lot of videos in a short period of time to putting out fewer, longer videos? It was not a hard switch. It was an easy switch because I am no longer burnt out. Truly, it's been one of the best decisions ever that I've made for like my mental and physical health. Not sitting in front of a computer for over 50 hours a week filming and editing a video for two times a week has done wonders for my brain. Have you thought about starting up the podcast again? Yes, I have definitely thought about it. What are your plans for your birthday? Dude, I kind of wanted my birthday at the Betsy Ross house because I saw that there was a party at the Betsy Ross house and then I found out that you could rent it out and it was an option for a short amount of time. I really don't know what to do for my birthday. I'm turning 24. How do you get your bandanas to stay on? You know what? I will teach you. It's so easy. I swear on my life. You're gonna get a square bandana. You're gonna fold it in half. You're gonna put it on your head. You're gonna decide where you want the front to be placed. Boom. Boom. Play around with it however you want. Shit is not coming off. I got asked if I'm wearing a lot of bandanas recently because I'm going bald. The answer is no. It's just that there comes a time in every young woman's life where we don't feel like washing our hair. Any specific larger projects you want to work on in the future? Wishing you the best. Thank you so much. I would love to interview artists at music festivals or at concerts. I've never done that, but I really admire the awkward interviewers such as Nardwar or even the younger generation who are starting to interview celebrities. I think that's very cool. Um, I think artists should be interviewed by people who are actually fans of them and not by just randoms. And I would love to do that one day, so fingers crossed. Book recommendations. The Guest by Emma Klein. I wish I could reread that book again for the first time. It was so good. Go-to perfume as of recently. The Comforter by Lush, specifically in the black spray bottle. It's an acquired scent, but just from the best smelling bitch in the room. Favorite way to eat tomatoes right off the vine. The last question that I'll answer today is are you content with where you are in life right now? Yes, very. I'm very content. I really am. I feel very grateful and very happy and like, sometimes I'll just get kind of like emotional because I really didn't think that my life could be so peaceful and kind of secure feeling, especially at this age, especially after some of the things that I'd gone through in the last few years. I've just been very reflective in this time and very grateful and also not taking it for granted. So even though you may see a little bit less of these like personal style videos on my channel. Just know it's for the benefit of myself and my health and my happiness. But also at the same time, I feel really happy about making videos that make me feel fulfilled and don't burn me out and that aren't centered 
solely on my life all the time. And honestly, I think a lot of other YouTubers who have chosen to monetize off of their day-to-day -day life could probably hear the same words uh, and maybe learn from that. Because while I am very extremely thankful that I did it, I'm also very thankful and happy that I stepped away from that. For more personal day-to-day -day kind of stuff, I do post a lot on my TikToks, on Reels, on Instagram. And I started making videos when I was 19 years old. So naturally from the age of 19 to almost 24, did I mention I'm turning 24 next month? Obviously in that time, hopefully I would evolve and change my style and how I choose to make videos and it's just not always going to stay the same. I hope that everyone's okay with it, but also at the same time, if people are not okay with it, at least I am okay with it. I'm gonna go throw all these clothes in the wash now. To all my tomato hating bitches out there, I will leave you with this. I don't have any homegrown ones at the moment, so this unfortunately does not taste like love. It tastes like Trader Joe's, but thank you if you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Deepop, Spotify, I just sat in a cool wrap. You want to follow me on my TikTok, that Nikki Nasty. Bye, bye. <laughs>